From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Today we're going to be dealing with some things that are happening right in our backyard. I think you'll all agree that the weather is so very, very important right now. And that's one of the headlines. Why the extreme weather globally, not just in our backyard, but globally. And the worst economic recovery in history. That surprised me. Also, Russian and Chinese presidents support Iran's nuclear rights. So they are standing with them. And Jack has brought that out so very often. And we're going to be talking about that in a moment. But, uh, you know, Jack had many, many rallies and crusades before we ever started television. And Jackie had some humorous <laughs> things happen in some of those rallies. I was at the Nazarene Church in Lansing, Michigan, and Leslie Parrott was the minister, well-known author. And it was Easter time and the place was packed and he had a hundred voice choir sitting behind me. And that day I went to Sears and Roebuck to buy a new suit and I didn't spend a lot for it. Apparently, there weren't enough threads in it. And I was a concert accordionist and used to put on these programs before I preached. And lo and behold, I'm bending over in front of the choir to pick up my accordion and the whole seat rips out from end to end. Oh, oh, I, oh I'm so glad I was wearing underwear. <laughs> and fortunately, it had rained and I went and grabbed my raincoat and threw it on and the first sermon I ever preached, the entire message, wearing a raincoat. And there were showers of blessing that night. They still got saved, amen. <laughs> oh, Jack. Oh, boy. Well, you've lost a little weight since then, maybe, too. That's helped out a lot, I think. Yeah, I haven't torn too many out since. <laughs> You know, friends, as we observe all the global events, I think that we'll all have to come to the conclusion that it's not an accident. There has to be something that it really, really means. And Jack wrote an article that I'd really like to share with you about what we're talking about right now. Take a look. In the past several years, we see that the signs of the times are increasing all around us in global fashion. We seem to be in a period of disasters in the form of earthquakes, tsunamis, witnessing a developing global economic collapse. Wars are spreading. Terrorism is increasing. We now are experiencing the rise of Islam, which has been a sleeping religious cultural giant since the Ottoman Empire's defeat. I think that you'll agree that he has hit on so many things that are happening all around us. As I said before, not in our own backyard, but globally. Jack, well done. Ah, we're in trouble. Second Timothy 3, 1, this know also that in the last day, perilous, dangerous times shall come. They're here. Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, nations will be in distress with perplexity, in mass confusion, not knowing which way to turn. We'll be dealing with some of these signs in a moment, tsunamis and all the rest. But the main thing I want you to see through that article is the rise of Islam. And they've awakened and it's going to become a spring that turns into winter soon. Because listen to what's going on in all these countries as they slaughter their own people in Egypt, in Syria, in Yemen, in Algeria. There's no end to it. But they have a special goal. <clears throat> And that's to rid the world of the Jew, drive them into the sea, as they said. And the main pusher of that is Ahmadinejad of Iran. 
and his verses, Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation, let their name be no more in remembrance. And they're going to try to wipe the Jew off the face of the earth because his Messiah, Mukti, only will come after he's performed that goal, the ridding of the Jews. And that's why Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob changed his name to Israel in 2 Kings 17, 34. So that's the whole picture. And I predicted it because I knew what the scripture says is I just gave them to you. Mm. Jack, you know, I was really shocked about something that was pointed out to me uh, just this past week. In 2012, already this year, we've had 653 tornadoes reported and 332 confirmed. That's just this year, yes. Jack. Now, let's look back briefly at uh, 2011, if you will, please. In 2011, 89 disasters have been declared. They were. And again, earthquake and tsunami caused huge destruction in Japan. None of us will ever forget what happened in Japan. And Japan's tsunami waves top historic heights, never in history. And then, of course, this really touched my heart. I was born in Missouri, Joppa, Missouri, torn apart by deadly storm. More extreme weather coming, scientists say. Why the extreme weather? Oh, what a good question that is. On the cover of our magazine, perhaps today, 2012, has history's final year begun? Very, very good question. I think you'll agree. Why the extreme weather? All the things that we've been talking about, about the natural disasters globally. Does the Bible address it? I know the scientists are very confused. They don't know what's causing it. and wondering if human beings are causing it, Jack. But the Bible does address it, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it really does. Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, concerning the tsunamis and oceanic disturbances that the sea and the waves would be roaring. Then he talked about the tornadoes and hurricanes in Luke 21, 26, men's hearts failing them for fear, looking after those things which are coming to pass on the earth. And man, they've been frightened in the last few months. And then all of the earthquakes. Jesus said they're going to be in divers places. We've never seen so many things happening at once in this form of judgment. And of course, that is Matthew 24, 7, Mark 13, verse 8. And when we get to the book of Revelation, Revelation 6, verse 12, chapter 8, verse 5, chapter 11, verses 13 and 19, and chapter 16, verse 18, which is the greatest earthquake in history. Let's know what John, the revelator, the one who wrote the book of Revelation, said in Revelation 6, 12. I beheld, and he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And it's fulfilled in Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Now, Carl Sagan, the great man who knew astronomy and space better than almost any human being now to see said there's a day coming when an asteroid a gigantic one's going to hit the earth and it will throw dust upwardly and the entire area of the world will be darkened for anywhere from 60 to 90 days and believe me it's not going to be the end of the world i got god's promises that it will never end as far as this globe is concerned 120 different times. And Isaiah 45, 17, and Ephesians 3, 21, both say it's a world without end. Amen. Sleep well tonight. But what's this thing about the darkness? NASA says there could be gigantic solar storms that would black out all the nation for a number of months. There it is again. And then there is the electromagnetic pulse. If Ahmadinejad or some other man who hates America were to bring his ship out in the ocean and 200 miles from our coast because that's as close as they can come under those circumstances and shoot an atomic weapon into the air 300 miles height as it explodes it mixes with the gamma rays and comes down to earth it hits the magnetic field and everything coast to coast America Canada Mexico blackened all of this could 
become a reality. And why? Because these are the signs Jesus said you'd see when he's coming. This is not negative. As, you know, when we talk about the disasters in the world and, and things that we're very, very concerned about, it's not negative. It's something pointing to something very, very positive. In fact, Jesus, when he gave some of these signs, said, don't let your heart be troubled. He yeah. doesn't want us to yeah. worry about it, does he? Let me get at it, Rick Sella. We have hope because Titus 2.13 says, we're looking for that blessed, happy hope, the glorious appearing of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when he comes, we're going to be evacuated, missing all of this if you're born again. Praise the Lord. I'll keep you from out of the hour of testing, which comes on the whole world. But you've been moved out, evacuated, raptured. Revelation 3.10, that's why Luke 21.36, Jesus speaking said, Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass in the earth. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. That's so good. Well, now let's uh, focus and give our direction a little bit uh, different place right now, and that is to agriculture. The Department of Agriculture has given us a report right here in the United States. And this is about a mad cow disease. New mad cow discovery stirs fears. Now this is the first since 2006. Something else. Bird flu. Research row as U.S. raises terror fears. And stop the spread. Biologists remain vigilant with VHS virus. They're very concerned about um, the fish, of course. Report nearly 7 million bats died across Northeast from mysterious disease. Now, this is something that I didn't realize was that important, but we'll deal with it in a moment. I want to explain it with this next one. Bats and bees dying. Now, it's already affected 16 states. And because they are the ones who eat the insects, it will affect the crops. I didn't realize that. Bats and bees, very important to our agriculture. Now again, does the Bible teach us anything about all of this happening? And could millions die because of it, Jack? Yes, Rexella, the mad cow disease and the bird flu disease can kill millions upon millions, like the great Spanish flu of a few years back. And even the eating of the meat can take one's life. But let's go further. This fish, you see it had a red face. That's the blood seeping out because of the virus. And that is deadly when you eat it. And they can't figure out what's going on because 25 new diseases have come to, into being just in the last 25 or 30 years. And the bats, as Rexella said, they go after all of the insects in the crops and the bees pollinate. And if they can't pollinate because millions are dying mysteriously, again, it fixed the food. Jesus said there shall be pestilences, Matthew 24, 7, and Luke 21, 11. And it's explained in Revelation 6, verses 7 and 8. They're the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this is the sickly looking horse and his name is called Death. And hell rode with him, and power was given unto them over a fourth part of men to kill by hunger, sword, death, and the beasts of the field, the animal life. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, he's coming soon. It's right at the door. Oh, Jack, it, you know, it really is exciting. Sometimes people think, oh, I don't want to really hear about the negative. I want to just know the positive. But not knowing doesn't change it. It's out there. We need to know why we need to have the blessed hope that the Lord gives to us in the Word of God. And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. Well, you know, in April, the Wall Street Journal uh, had an article that gives us an accurate picture, actually, of the economy right here in the United States. We're all very, very concerned about it. The worst economic recovery in history. World facing worst financial crisis in history, the Bank of England governor says. And Europe's banks brace for trouble. Do you see something, friends? This is not just here. It is around the world. And again, economic fears hit markets from New York 
to Tokyo. There's in the Orient. Banks foreclosing on churches in record numbers. They say, you can't pay, therefore we'll close you up. Time not on the side of the jobless. And once again, new Sony CEO to cut 10,000 jobs. And Yahoo dumping 2,000 workers in latest purge. J.C. Penney trims headquarters staff. Trustees report Social Security outlook is worsening. They don't know exactly when that will be cut off permanently. Well, again, let's look to the authority. And I'm so grateful that Jack never says anything to us. I know you recognize that, that he can't back up with the Bible. That's God speaking, yeah. Jack. James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. Go to now, you rich men, weep. Howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. And you know why they're weeping? Verse 4, you've heaped treasure together for the last days. When? The last days, just before Jesus comes. You find that picture of wailing people, investors, and they're losing it all in Revelation chapter 18, verses 10, 17, and 19. For in one hour is thy judgment come, for in one hour all her riches have come to nothing. In one hour is she made desolate. It's so bad that they're casting their silver in the streets and their gold is being removed, confiscated. And that, of course, is in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. It's really going to get bad, ladies and gentlemen, but it leads to an hour called the tribulation, and it's a seven-year period. And they've gone to a new system because everything else has failed, and it's called the mark of the beast, the 666 number of Revelation 13, verses uh, 16 to 18. And a group called the Bilderbergs at Chancellor, Virginia, outlined the whole plan to microchip every human being on Earth. Now that, according to the Bible, takes place during the part of the tribulation called mid-trib. And you'd have to be gone for the rapture at that point, but it's all here. We're the generation. Oh, Jack, I love it. Well, you know, I didn't think that I would ever really read that Iran would uh, be ready to attack the United States. But take a look, if you will, please, at uh, what is happening out there, how Iran would fight the U.S. And then terrorism expert to Congress. Iran is willing to approve attacks against the United States. Panetta, U.S. fully prepared for an Iran challenge. And Iran prepares for kamikaze attacks. And Iran preparing suicide boats in case of a Strait of Hormuz conflict. Again, Iranian submarines ambush for U.S. aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf. And energy experts say gas could hit, whoa, $8 if Iran closes the strait. Now, we're going to stop here for just a moment. I'm going to ask Jack once again about all of these headlines. Certainly, Jack, the economy is found in the Bible. And now, is this found in the Bible? Uh, this, these terroristic events certainly are excellent. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 37, As the days of Noah were, so shall it be when I return. How was it in Noah's day? Genesis 6, verse 11. The whole world was filled with violence and terrorism. I used this last week. I'm going to use it again. Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 9, when you see wars and commotions, wars and terrorism, wars and revolutionaries, then what? What's next? He says, don't be frightened. Why not? Because verse 27, here it is again. Then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming to the clouds of glory with power. And I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we're there. He goes on to say in verse 31, and it's even going to get worse as far as terrorism is concerned. And when it's full blast in the world, then you know that my kingdom, my coming to earth as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Revelation 19, 16, is right at the door. In fact, the generation that lives to see this sign 
shall not pass from the earth. We're going to be gone. We're going to be evacuated. And we're warning you, America, prepare. And Christians especially, get ready. Mm, Jack, I have a few more headlines here. Yeah, I'm going to present yeah. uh, to all of us right now the first one from the Wall Street Journal. Iranian leader promotes nuclear plans. China, Russia resists sanctions against Iran. Russian Chinese presidents support Iran's nuclear rights. Iran's link to China includes nukes and missiles. Russia says Western strike on Iran would be catastrophe. And Francis Sarkozy. Military strike on Iran would trigger Middle East war. Once again, I'm going to ask Jack about the Bible and these headlines. Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24, 7, Mark 13, 8, Luke 21, 9. But get this. Now, this is shocking. You've probably never heard me say this before. Right now, we're in a mess in Syria and our president's afraid. You know why he's afraid? Because Russia already has ships there saying we're going to protect Syria and so is China. Well, is this Armageddon? No. But they're lining up the nations that will join with them for the big war. Right now, Iran, you just heard it. Russia says, don't put any more sanctions on Iran. China agrees. Leave them alone. Why? Iran is going to be with Russia for Armageddon. And that's Persia of Ezekiel 38.5. And Syria is Isaiah 17, 1. We could show you the whole lineup of all the Arab nations going along with Russia for the greatest war in history. And that's the war of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2. And their cities all are in Russia at this present hour. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics had many nations drift away from it. Now they're trying to build the Eurasian Empire again. And they're going to try to pull in many of the Muslim nations to join with them. I name them all in Daniel 1140 and Isaiah 17, 1, as I said, Syria, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses uh, 5 to 7. All the Arab world united with Russia and China, Revelation 16, 12, and chapter 9, verses 14, 18, the greatest war in history. It's all coming together. We are the generation. Oh, Jack, the Lord gave us all of these evidences of his soon coming and we need to be ready are you ready for the coming of the lord you know so many times we have things in our lives we wouldn't want the lord to find there maybe it is drugs maybe it's alcohol maybe it's something else pornography or whatever but the lord will come into your life he'll forgive you he'll be your savior will you open your heart to him if you've never done that we're going to ask jack to give the invitation right now our young people used to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, and he does love you. And he loved you so much he died. This God of love, 1 John 3, 16, came and suffered agonizingly as the blood flowed down his body and on the tree on which he was hanging to save you, to cleanse you. Now look and receive him. Pray it. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, be my Savior today. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Don't you love that word, Savior? I'm so happy that Jesus is my Savior. I'll never forget when I prayed that prayer, asking Jesus to cleanse me and come into my life. I was 17 years old, and what a change it was in my life. If you pray that prayer, there's my address right to me. First steps in a new direction will be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. The Lord wants to walk with you every day of your life. God bless you as you walk with Him. First steps in a new direction. We have a wonderful, wonderful offer for you that um, you really need to pay attention to an order in just a moment because it's Jack Van Impey answers 35 most outstanding questions about Christianity and Bible prophecy. You got some questions? You need to really have this because it'll answer all of them. And when you order this, I'm going to be sending you, will it happen this year? Oh my Oh my, it could happen this year. Now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive Dr. Jack Van Impey's answers to the 35 most startling questions about 
Christianity and Bible prophecy. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I just want to encourage you to make the call. You really need to have this wonderful offer, and don't forget, I'll be sending you a gift. The wonderful Will It Happen this year, and of course, Jack is astounding when he goes right out ahead and explains all the things in the Bible pertaining to the coming of the Lord. And now I want to present to you a closing thought. I take it to my heart. Our greatest weakness may be our failure to ask for God's strength. Our greatest weakness, our failure to ask for God's strength. Well, we're going to look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye.